Yeah, sorry guys. I was out. Stupid bandwidth problem here down. You know, you're in downtown San Francisco, the heart capital of the tech world, and you can't get enough bandwidth for your phone. All right, that's the way it works. Under capitalism, one of the most inefficient systems ever devised, except for when it comes to extracting. Anyway, we're going to go back to the speakers. For compassion from our relative, the fire. And we are asking for the waters to come out of the sky and to tamper down that great flame. When we stand here as human beings, we have to look around the world and see what kind of fascism is happening right now. When they are taking away indigenous rights in sacred places all over the world. This is our last stand. We must draw the line and we must stand with our brothers and sisters all over the world who are doing this work in whichever way we can. Today, we pray with them and we ask for their continued courage as they stand the lines against this greed, this monopoly, this people that do not see the next seven generations and beyond. We ask for special prayers right now. We ask that our hearts are broken wide open so that we are not stifled in our positions any longer. That we as human beings must take a side. And the time is now. We have no more time left. I am the grandmother of four babies who I have to leave in this land and this world with so much more pain than when I got here. And I'm hoping that we as human beings come together to continue to do the work of saving the waters, to saving the air, of saving the oil, of keeping, of saving the soil and keeping the oil in the ground. So if you look like we take a, a breath with me, and let's take this breath, and as we breathe it out, let it go through our feet and into the roots, into the ground of our life. And let us send those prayers that reverberate throughout the roots to our sisters and brothers that are in the Amazon. Let's take a deep breath. And as we open up our hearts wide open, let us think of these tears that are flowing as the water is all over the earth right now. And let us ask for forgiveness and ask for hope and strength to wash our bodies off with it, to allow us to have fresh water for the next seven generations and beyond, to clean up our oceans and our rivers and our lakes and our streams, to allow our salmon to come back home, to ask for all of those things that need to be taken care of and our waters to be taken care of. Our next deep breath, we take. We ask for blessings as we let go of our breath into the air, that the airs are clean and open, and that we continue to have fresh air to breathe, and that the coolness comes and the fog comes and the rain comes when those things are supposed to happen. We ask for the winds to be tempered down that they do not get out of control, that the hurricanes are lessened, that our snowstorms are not so severe. We take a deep breath and we ask our Mother Earth to continue to hold us, to forgive us, to allow there to be soil that is nutrient rich, so that we can feed our people for the next seven generations and beyond. We ask for a special blessing of our cleaning and a beautiful community. We are not Yes, sir. I hear your mind and your heart. 
during the prayer so I'll talk a little bit uh, we're down here at 300 Montgomery Street here in downtown San Francisco I uh, got a crew of maybe 50 to 75 people uh, that were organized by the rainforest uh, I, don't, I don't want to say actually but uh, it's a indigenous rights protest to save the Brazilian rainforest to stop the wholesale arson that's going on there. And uh, so we're out here doing what we can do. Um, I gave the wrong number out a little bit earlier, unfortunately, but uh, the number you want to call if you want to complain to the Brazilian consulate is 981-8170. That's area code 415-981-8170. Done with the prayer now. I'm going to move a little closer. Oh, that's it. Brazil Solidarity. I keep saying rainforest action, but it's not it. Creativity. 
Good morning, my name is Kalina. I am Suquamish. I am from Suquamish. I am from the place of the clear salt water of the Salish Sea. We are salmon people. We are so called speaking people. Toshuseed speaking people. I am joyful. I'm happy to be here today. I said, excuse me, I said we will be okay. I also said we will be strong. Thank you to the ancestral peoples of this land, to the stewards of Jalamu, um, all Ohlone territories here. Um, it's an honor to be here and to be asked to come and participate and to share what I can in solidarity. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about that call and response that Maria, um, that Maria had us engage. Um, I wrote that for a class called Performing Arts and Community Exchange in collaboration with Resolve to Stop Violence at San Bruno County Jail. And we sang that song inside the county jail uh, for one whole semester. And um, I wanted to bring into the space our relatives that are incarcerated, our, our res relatives who are political prisoners, um, and our, our folks of color um, who are being oppressed systemically in that way. So they're here with us today as well. When we sing that song, uh, we're bringing them together as well. I wanted to share a song that was originally written by my sister Sylvie Karina and um, and it, it really speaks a lot to the work that all of us do on a daily basis uh, for Mother Earth and for all of her children. Uh, so this is called Gaia. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I just had to take a quick phone call about my new wheelchair. So, glad they called me. I'm waiting on the chair for a long time now. So, sorry about that. Let's go 
check out the painting. So beautiful. All right. So I just want to tell you all a little bit about who we are as Brazil Solidarity Network. We've been coming here every month since January and in a monthly rally in front of the consulate. And this came, let me find a good spot here. That seems better. We started doing that when Jair Bolsonaro was elected to be president of Brazil. How many of you know that much about President Bolsonaro? Let me see your hands. Okay. So, Bolsonaro was elected on a far-right, Christian, evangelical, conservative platform. Ooh. And, ooh, one thing that reminds me that I want to head up people just for the day is we are all about love. So we, we don't want any hate speech. We don't want, we're not booing, we're not saying, like, bad things about Bolsonaro. We... We will not change anything with that, and, and we ask that of all of you when you stand with us. So, okay. So, uh, we've been coming every single month since January, and sometimes we're little, and sometimes we're big, like today. We are so big, and we are so beautiful. And um, what I want to do, before I hand the microphone over to our first speaker from Amazon Watch, which I see her over there, um, is I'm going to, throughout the morning, and with the help of certain people, be reading off species in the Amazon of Brazil that we are losing because of these fires, which we're going to learn more about as the morning progresses. So I'm going to start with that now. Hey, Izzy. going to start this list, and obviously, this isn't everybody that's in the Amazon, but it's a pretty full list. The main wolf, bush dogs, quarry foxes, short-eared dogs, crab-eating foxes, jaguar, cougar, marguerite, ocelot, Ancilla, Haguarundi, Giant Anteater, Silky Anteater, Collared Anteater, Ten Species of Armadillos, Five Species of Sloth, Cotis, Giant River Otter, Tapir, Peccaries, Marsh deer, Pampas deer, Capybara, Howler monkeys, Capuchin monkeys, Squirrel monkeys, 177 species of bats, including the big eared bat, the hairy big eared bat, the little big eared bat, the common. Big eared bat. The white belly big eared bat. Schmidt big eared bat. I'm going to ask Layla to tell us how to go with the Amazon Watch to talk about next. She's going to tell a little bit about what Amazon Watch is doing, who they are, and how you can plug in as a really tangible way beyond your prayers to make a difference and make change happen. Can we give it up for Maria? <laughs> right. Uh, my name is Leila Salazar Lopez. I am Chicana, Latina, from Southern California. I'm mother, 
defender of Mother Earth, like all of us protectors here today. And I'm the executive director of Amazon Watch. And as you all probably know, that's why you're here. We work to protect the Amazon rainforest and our climate by standing with indigenous peoples of the Amazon because they are the best protectors of the Amazon rainforest. And there's been lots of attention on the Amazon this week. The last week has been one of the most devastating and trying weeks at Amazon Watch for those of us that dedicate our, our every day to defending the Amazon. Um, it's been really hard to see the fires burning and hear the pleas from our friends and our allies in the Amazon to help. But it's been really encouraging and overwhelming to see the global response from the media, from the world, basically crying out and saying, what is happening? The largest rainforest, the most biodiverse rainforest on the planet, the Amazon, the most biologically diverse terrestrial ecosystem, and one of the most culturally diverse is on fire. And we've been trying to sound the alarm about the devastation and the threats to the Amazon, to the biodiversity, as, as um, Auntie Karina said, to the four-leggeds, to all the animals, to all the plants, to all the people, to our climate. We've been trying to sound this alarm for over 20 years. And it has never received this much attention. So while it is so devastating, and almost, after you read the New York Times this morning, almost, you know, just it. feeling like, Hopeless. what more can we do? Don't read that article. It'll make you really depressed like I am right now. You won't be depressed. <laughs> um, this bite's but not over until it's over. Even though it seems so daunting, it is also such a huge opportunity for us right now to not let the story die. This is not a story that's going to die. This is not just a one-week media cycle. This is important for our, all of our collective survival on this planet. We have to protect the Amazon and stand with indigenous peoples if we have any hope for regeneration and restoration and life on this planet for our children, for our future generations, for all those plants and animals that are suffering right now. And those of us, we're here in San Francisco, um, we felt the impact of the Paradise Fire Last year, many of us, um, just a few years ago, we were at Alcatraz. <clears throat> I remember waking up that day and being like, wow, it smells kind of like a campfire. It's my uh, calling. And then we went to Alcatraz and saw the sunrise and started feeling the fires in Santa Rosa. And then next year, the Paradise Fire. We like, we felt what that feels like to not be able to breathe. That was a small you know, touch. For our kids to not be able to go to school because it's too hard to breathe outside. Imagine that happening for months. Because that's what's happening in Brazil and across the Amazon. Over 74,000 fires this year alone in Brazil. Over 3,500 just this week in indigenous lands. Over 100 indigenous territories have been affected. And this is just in Brazil. And I think it's important we're here in front of the Brazilian consulate because the majority of the fires are in Brazil. But some of the biggest are in Bolivia. 
Over 900,000 hectares of land, of forest, have burned in Bolivia. And they're calling out to us and they're saying, please tell the world that Bolivia is on fire too. Our friends in Peru, the Shu people, are also calling and saying, tell the world, Peru, the forests in Peru are also on fire. And right. this is not an accident. No, it's not an accident. It's arson. We're not talking bad about Bolsonaro, but it is his rhetoric, his racist rhetoric, and the government policies under his regime that are emboldening people to go set fire to the rainforest, to indigenous people's lands, and frankly, attack indigenous people. Brazil is the most dangerous place to be a land defender in the, in the world. And we have to stand with them. It is our responsibility as protectors and defenders of Mother Earth to stand with indigenous people right now. Their lands, their lives, their bodies, their territories, and the spirits are under attack. And so I just want to name a few. Isa, one of our partners in Brazil, the Instituto Socioambiental, just released this um, amazing and daunting map of indigenous territories affected by the fire. So I just want us for a moment to just Sorry about that. You know, pray Answer. for the indigenous territories that are most affected by the fires right now. The Parque Indígena Araguaya, Pimentel, Barbosa, oh shoot. Parabure, the Kayapo, the Terra Indígena Kayapo and Pará, which is the Chiquín Kayapo. These are the people that have already been affected by the Belo Mochi Dam and the Belo Sun mining, gold mine that was built next to it. Now their, their lands are on fire. Parechi, the Munduruku. We were just in Munduruku territory in July. And, um, and now their territory is under fire. They're surrounded by soy plantations, cattle ranching, and threatened by proposals for industrial waterways, hidrovias, to be able to transport soy from the Tapajos River, one of the largest free-flowing Blackwater rivers that they stopped the dam from taking place, and now they're threatened by agribusiness. So we have to stand with the Munduru crew. I could go on and on and on, but I will just say that, I think Christian's gonna talk later too, so I will just say that I'm, while we're devastated, let's stand together to keep the hope alive. I think that's the only way that we're gonna be able to do this, is by standing together and unifying to stand with indigenous peoples, protect the Amazon. We're doing a global day of action on September 5th. We'll be back here next Thursday, as, as well as around the world, there will be actions and prayers and nonviolent direct actions and sit-ins and silent vigils all around the world. And so we ask you to come back next week at 12 noon, and you can sign up at the Global Day of Action at AmazonWatch.org. Join us and take action for the Amazon, for indigenous peoples, for the climate, and for all of our future. Thank you so much. All right. All right. That was from While Maria is doing something, hi, I'm Isabella Zizi. You don't really need to know me as much. Um, but I would like to introduce Red Lightning Women uh, to come up here and offer such beautiful songs. And uh, before they come, I'd just like to say, you know, this is fulfilling one of those pro one of the prophecies of the eagle and condor uh, coming together and standing for the water, standing for indigenous people, standing for Mother Earth, and standing for all generations to come. And so this is a very powerful moment that we are living in right now. So here, thank you. Good morning, relatives. It's good to be here today. Uh, we come to offer prayer and song uh, for the healing. What's going on down there with all the fires and all? Um, we're going to sing. Uh, we we like to sing uh, the.
the healing uh, <clears throat> water song um, that we usually sing for the water walks out here, the Anishinaabe water song um, for healing of the water and um, healing of the environment and healing of Mother Earth. you know the song you're welcome to come up and sing with us um so me be Offer those prayers out there for healing. are giving thanks thanking the water water we thank you water water we love you water we respect you mother earth we love you mother earth we respect you we honor you the second song that we're going to sing today is a uh, a lot of you know it um it's been saying a lot of i don't know more um actions and a lot of environmental actions and we sing it because it's uh today it's called the strong women's song but it was originally known as the Mother Earth Song, and it came to the Little Watt Nation in British Columbia to a woman named Martina Pierre during her time of need when her daughter needed healing. Um, so the song was originally known as a Mother Earth Song, um, and I, I received a story from um, a man named Mr. Wallace from up in the Little Watt Nation who shared this with me a couple years ago. Um, so originally known as the Mother Earth Song, uh, went away Sometimes songs and dances disappear and return back, um, given to, um, came to Martina Pierre for healing for her family and uh, became known as the Warrior Woman Song and sang across the nation. And so if you know this song, uh, you're welcome to join us as well.
much for having this for you. We'll try to make it back. I'm so glad to be here um, and just hearing everybody, you know, and it, um, I just want to encourage us all. I know I'm definitely going out and going to spread the word as well, you know, to um, there should be more people here today. And I'm thankful for who's here today, you know, and I always believe that whoever's here today, that's the way Creator meant it to be. But just the importance of us going out and um, sharing this information out, you know. Everyone have a blessed day. Thank you. Right, thank you. Let's check on our painting out here in the middle of Montgomery Street. Oh, 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 oh. Just about finished. Yeah. Up next, I think we're almost ready for our Dantante is doing a really beautiful prayer That's offering. Nice. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, go look at this mural. That looks it's great. so beautiful. Yay! <laughs> the people who worked really hard to make this oh, mural happen. Sweet. And a big, huge thank you to David Solnit. Yay, David! Put up with my detailed mural. <laughs> she is so beautiful. I think I'll have my assistant do a little camera duty here. Right at 300 Montgomery for those of you just joining in. Um, here protesting the wholesale arson of the Amazon. So glad to be here. And, uh, of course, I haven't seen any MSM here, you know, mainstream media. They're not going to ask this. You know, they're going to cover this. And you know where their bread is buttered on and who pays the checks. And it's not the indigenous tribes of Brazil. It's people like Bolsonaro. So these mega corps. And going in and just, you know, it's easy to destroy the whole thing with just a bulldozer and a, and a torch. And they say that the equivalent of three soccer fields a, a minute are being destroyed in the right okay, so, so. While you're admiring the mural, the danzantes are going to get set up. And once they're set up, we're going to turn our attention this way as they make their, as they make their prayer offering. I don't want to step on anybody's toes here, but what's sacred. That's uh, Dave Solnit, David Solnit. Great. He paints all of our banners and stuff. He's such a great guy. I've known Dave since since 1983. 26 years. No, 36. Anyway, this is kind of a crew from Poor Magazine. So for the Dunsantes, we would ask you that we're just going to have one photographer for this. Well, we're not going to. So I knew they were going to let us. Everyone else, please no photos or videos. Thank you. So we'll cover the painting. Sorry, I crashed into it. That's okay. You're the one. I don't want to hurt you. I'm, huh? I said. I said, I weigh, this chair and me weigh 500 pounds. I don't, <laughs> I 
I'm not going to feel it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to feel it. All right, Mike, thanks for watching. We're going to go down to the other side here and check out traffic since we're doing a holy sacred ceremony. Rather. And yes, that's not to photograph anything, which is cool. Let's go check out the... All the angry people. Okay, if I get by, guys. Oh yeah. Okay. Here. Let me go on the other side. I think I can go underneath. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, they're doing some prayers over there, and they don't want anybody to photograph or video. And I don't feel like turning off the camera because when I turn off the live stream, I lose my audience, right? Because everybody quits watching. So you've got to kind of, you know, I lost my signal once and. I lost my audience. It happens. You know, it's the, uh, it's like what happens when you're on the cutting edge of, of art. So I've been doing this for eight years now. This is like my 670th live stream. So and I even took a couple of years off. Yeah, I took it like a whole year off too. So, but I'm getting ready to hit the road uh, soon. And uh, do a little more traveling, and I especially like going to DC. Right, a lot of live streaming opportunities there. Because there's always protests in DC, always. And plus, there's work. You know, like if you like covering congressional hearings, and there's always something to cover there. You know, so, but I like California. I've been in San Francisco a long time. Thank you. Thanks everybody for being here. You know, I mean, I know it's like, personally with me, I feel like it's hopeless. <laughs> I really do. And no matter what I do, I spent 40, I, since 1970, I've been an organizer. And the world couldn't be in worse shape than it is now. Are you from every city? Um, well, I've been living here, yeah. I, I've been living here since 83, 82. I grew up in Maryland. Oh, yeah, I've been arrested many times. Matter of fact, I've been arrested right in front of that building right there back in 1984 for uh, the Democratic Convention. I don't know if you guys remember that. Oh, yeah, San Francisco's, it's not the city that it used to be. It's too, it's too wrapped up with money. And it always was a greedy place. People are really greedy here. I mean, that's what built San Francisco was all the greed. But... Uh, you know, when they destroyed the Haight Ashbury, that was that. That took a. Black neighborhood. Oh yeah. Yeah, but it seemed like a nail. Nail. I can't afford to live here. If I'm going to pay top dollar, I'm going to go to Berkeley because the weather's nicer. Right? And if you're a political organizer, it makes it easier. Oh yeah. yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's hopeless, and there's nothing I can do. You know. All right. Let's. We got a blind lady that's coming up. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Even when the hopelessness of it starts to kick in, right? When you realize, you know, what are you going to do to stop the 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 destruction of the rainforest. 
You know, what are you going to do to stop global warming and climate change? And you start talking to people, and they look at you like you're crazy. You know, it's like, well, what are you going to do? You can call up the Brazilian embassy or the consulate, number one. And the number is 415-981-8170. Call and complain and tell them that they're not doing enough to put out the fires in the Amazon because they're not. And a lot of places are just letting it burn. And it's just, you know, we're talking about a destruction of something that's far more valuable than anything that Silicon Valley could have created. You know, we're looking at, you know, the cure for cancer down the road or, or just there's all these things that we're destroying without even having a chance to take a look at it first. And, uh, and not only the riches of the, of the land and the animals, it's also the people that we're talking about here too. There's, you know, millions of indigenous tribes that live there that, you know, we haven't even bothered talking to yet a lot of times. We're doing well. And if I were them, I'd stay the hell away from Westerners anyway. You know, any capitalist influence is just going to corrupt their, their society. So it's probably better for greedy capitalists to stay away from Brazil. I mean, that's what's going on right now. You know, they're not happy unless they're digging up everything. And, and you know how voracious the appetite of, of greed and capitalism is. And, uh, and nowhere are the effects more, percent, more profound than they are in the Amazon. So we're out here, and we're trying to do our best to save what's left of the wild lands, of the, the wild places that are in the world, you know, because once they're gone, you know, we'll never have those, those things back. And, uh, you know, people don't realize how valuable and how much they're going to miss them once they disappear. You know, you got this idiot, Trump, who's president, and the first thing he does is open up national parks to development. You know, the most precious resource the United States has are those national parks. Well, the same, almost identical thing. Well, I can't say identical because Brazil is actually going through a much more rapid transformation than the United States did. But it still will be akin to like in the United States back in the, uh, in the you know, the Wild West and whatever. Well, or when the Pilgrim showed up, actually, is that when the Pilgrim showed up, the United States was one deciduous forest from Maine all the way to the Midwest, to Chicago. One unbroken forest. And uh, and now look at it. Okay, well that one unbroken forest is akin as it could be comparable to the uh, the, uh, the Amazon. Although the Amazon's far richer. You know, it's far more densely populated with life. So that just shows you what even more of a tragedy than it really is. I can't take it much longer. I don't know what I'm going to do or what you can do. I mean, I put my body on the line. I've written, called, faxed, emailed, you know, broken the law, did civil disobedience. So what else can you do? You know, I'm wondering, start a revolution? Well, I tried that too. You know, you're talking to a guy that's been out there in all pieces. And I'm still putting my body and soul on line and my money and everything I make. And, you know, it's like goes into this, you know, because I, you know, I believe in life. And life is more important than money. You know, you got to realize that people have to realize that, start realizing it, that the land is more important than the money. So they're getting ready to dance up there. I don't know. It takes them five or ten minutes. And I'm not really into switching off the power. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, right. So I'm walking in right yeah. now, actually. I'll be there in about one minute. And greetings to those of you just joining us. And we're coming live from 300 in Montgomery Street in downtown San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, we're protesting the arson of the Amazon rainforest. Uh, hashtag save the Amazon. If you're on Twitter and you want to uh, tweet me out, which I'd really appreciate because this is a closed Facebook format. So you never know. Yeah, we got to think about it. You know, what are we going to leave here on this planet for succeeding generations? Uh, Greta Thunberg, 
Uh, she just made it over here from Sweden and in New York. And, uh, you know, it's it, it like, and she's just one person out of her generation that's actually saying something, you know. Uh, you know, we need more people like her, you know, that are actually going to say something and do something. You know, it's, but you can start by boycotting Burger King and letting them know that you're not eating their Whoppers anymore because Whoppers are uh, fed uh, soy, which comes from Amazon rainforest. And that's one direct way that you can make a difference. Uh, another way is when you're uh, looking at furniture or anything that's made with leather, uh, look and see if there's a Made in Brazil sticker on it and uh, boycott that as well. So those are two things you can do to maybe save the Amazon rainforest if it's not too late already. Yeah, I'll go back in just a second. But uh, you know, I have to respect everybody's wishes. Personally, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm an agnostic. So the sac sacred. Uh, I'll leave that for other people. Too. Go to the other side of the street, maybe where it's a little bit warmer. Cold old San Francisco, I swear, nothing changes here. I'm glad I live in Berkeley. It gets warm. Like right now, the sun is out. Try the other side of the street, it's a little warmer, perhaps. And come back to San Francisco, and it's freezing cold here. All right, working in a good old B of A used to be. Oh, this place has changed. Yeah, we're making our way down uh, Montgomery Street. Uh, we're right next to the B of A, the Bank of America. It used to be the Bank of America. Uh, now it's under construction. And I'm just kind of staying away from everything. Because I don't want to get in trouble. I'm always getting in trouble for something. Mr. Dave. We're just waiting for the, the prayer to be over. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm about giving it up. I'm getting a little tired. So uh, we're going to let it go here. And if anything happens here in a little bit later, we'll come back on. Okay? So this is Clark Sullivan. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, Remember again, the number to call is 415-981-8170 and complain to the British or the uh, Brazilian consulate, uh, you know, to take action and, uh, and do something to prevent this wholesale arson, arson of one of the world's most precious natural resources, you know, which is the native indigenous tribes in Brazil and also the land and the plants there. So thank you very much for watching and everybody have a good afternoon.